Delighted to be here at Tune's Parents Connects event, the first event for Tune connecting parents, expectant parents and parents of, of new babies. My name is Dr. Jinan Garavan. I'm a senior clinical psychologist based in Caspar Primary Healthcare, and I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague. My name is Ogechi Nsoido, and I'm a health promotion officer in uh, Kasuba Mayo. Uh, with a background uh, of uh, women's health physiotherapy. So it's nice to, to be with you, Jinan, today. Absolutely. It was a real pleasure, Getchi, wasn't it? I it mean, was. I was absolutely delighted that so many parents came yeah. and attended. And I think it really it's in acknowledgement of how, how par parenting is such an important job and the need to for parents to connect with each other. 100%, yeah, no, it was great to see the attendance that came. And it, I think the day went very well. And, you know, the main focus was really from our own perspective, trying to, you know, empower women on how to adjust to this very, you know, uneasy or transitional stage of their, yeah. of their lives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Because parenthood, particularly motherhood, can often be romanticized, can't it? And idealized that it's going to be just a joyful experience, which it can be uh, for sure for so many, um, but that, be, that it may come naturally. And of course, for many, as well as it being joyful, it's a real emotional roller coaster. It can also be really challenging. Yeah, and that's why today was so important for us to kind of put forward to them that there is a normalization of some of those feelings that yeah. maybe may not match up with what they feel is the expected. Yeah. Um, and I think, I, I hope that that really came across to all the women uh, mm -hmm. here. And um, because like you said, they, in terms of the fantasizing of what parenthood could mm -hmm. look like, and um, that could have come from social media, that mm -hmm. could have come from maybe what they've read in mm -hmm. magazines, um, but, you know, I can only imagine the, the, the dilemma for some of those women where they feel, oh, mm -hmm. how come I'm not matching up to what I saw on social media or how come I'm not matching up to what I saw on this magazine? So it was really good for us to be able to mm -hmm. kind of bring it down and tell them mm -hmm. that, look, these are physiological changes that would occur, emotional changes that mm -hmm. may, or emotional feelings, I'll say more so, that you may uh, mm -hmm. feel and all these things have a process Absolutely. and they are actually part mm. of the normal cycle Absolutely. in most cases. Absolutely. Mm. And I think there was a real acknowledgement of the unique journey mm. to pregnancy and parenthood and everybody's experience is unique. And mm. one of the things we tend to do is compare, you know, even babies that are sleeping or not sleeping, we tend to compare how come her baby is sleeping and mine is and we immediately then make judgments about ourselves. Are we mm. not doing it? good enough. And I think that really came across that need to be really compassionate and know that we're learning on the job and good enough mothering, good enough fathering is that learning on the job, making mistakes as we get to know each other, our little baby and ourselves, and also renegotiating relationships in, in, within the family. Yes, that's very true because uh, one of the questions that we put out was about sleep and how to manage mm. that and also the impact of sleep with respect to weight loss and it's almost like a, a catch-22 for mm. most women because the changes that occur in their anatomy, mm. whereby, you know, they may have added a little bit of weight, their tummy muscles may not be as firm as they think it should mm. be, their pelvic floor muscles may be very vulnerable, mm. many of them are keen on going back to fitness, some of them are tired even going back into fitness, and sometimes that balance really mm. with respect to sleep and exercise or sleep and general well-being can yeah. become a huge cogwheel for yeah. most women to be able to to manage but you know we just stressed and i think you also stressed that sleep was extremely important and the need that sleep may not necessarily have to be in the night only mm. sleep can be during the day when the mother when the baby is sleeping 
the mother can also take that a bit, even if it's just five minutes, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And from a physio point of view, we always really appreciate sleep mm -hmm. because sleep is usually when your body heals. Yeah. Sleep is when your body's calm. Sleep is when, like, if you are exercising, when you actually lose the weight, you is actually during the sleep. When yeah. you grow, all of that, mm -hmm. thing, all of them happen during sleep. So Absolutely. we can't really emphasize the importance of sleep. Yeah, um, and, yet, and yet it can feel such a luxury. Mm. And, and I think we rest and we sleep only when we know we have good social support. That's right. So I think a real key message we were talking about today is that we have our birth plan, but we really need a social support plan. That's right. It can be a really lonesome journey, parenthood. Even yes. if we have people around us, it's also about having those people who really have our back that we really trust. So as well as sleep, it's about taking regular breaks, refilling their emotional cup um, and taking regular breaks, taking time out in order for time in. I thought it was really interesting as well. Um, the role of dads came up and role of partners um, and how we it's so important to empower our partners to get stuck in from the get go. So as, for example, that moms can take take those regular breaks and, and allow dad to take over, if you will. Um, yes, yeah. And I really like the part where the public health nurse spoke, where basically now in their own practice, when they're going to homes, they're actually including the dads in the conversation. Yeah. And how are you finding it, dad? Mm. How are you getting on in terms of you yourself and this change that has occurred? Um, and then also where she stressed the fact that we as women need to also let go yeah. and allow the dad and almost give them that confidence mm. to be able to feel that they're well mm. able to help and support. Um, and just making sure, like you said there, that, that it comes with that connection, both with the father, both with the society, with, with, uh, uh, with your extended family mm. and the need to seek help whenever you feel you know things are overwhelming and you're not getting that time to be able to either sit still and even sleep yeah absolutely we have to reach out and not mm. feel we have to do it all by ourselves or that we've got this one and again it goes back to what you were saying actually about instagram we always mm. think there's the you know the ideal way of being and there isn't mm. and i think a really important notion is that there is no such thing as perfect parenting no. there is only good enough yeah. and the good enough parent, both mom and dad, because these early attachment relationships are so important for our baby's healthy development. And that's, that's right. why if we're talking about holding baby and caring for baby, then equally we have to hold and care parents and we just can't support parents enough, really. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 right. And holding holding a, a mother could come from different aspects. It could come from the emotional aspect, which was what was brought up as well, where one of the ladies asked the question, that um, how do we then find that balance, mm. you know, especially with respect to postnatal depression mm. and the baby blues. Mm. Yeah. I know we had the intention today to normalize some of mm. the feelings, mm. but then how do we then know how to set that boundaries? And that was when you then came, Jinan, mm. to explain a little bit more about yeah. postnatal depression. Yeah, I mean, I think two key factors that really help uh, parents adjust to what is an enormous transition, which mm. is new parenthood, is our expectations mm. and then the quality of our social support. Mm. And suppose today we really, I guess, normalized that it is an emotional roller coaster and you are going to feel down and overly sensitive at times, for mm. example, tearful. Mm. But what we try to distinguish was when, a, when those feelings persist and if we're feeling down to the point that it's interfering or very anxious, that it's interfering with our quality of life or our mm. capacity to function or our joy mm. of being a parent um, and bonding with our baby, then we need to seek professional help. And we can start by obviously reaching out within our own natural support network, okay. but we really do need to seek professional help. Um, and that means talking to your public health nurse mm. or your GP. And in each of the maternity hospitals in Galway and Mayo and Roscommon, there is a perinatal specialist perinatal mental health midwife. Mm. Um, but if it's after, if it's in the postnatal phase, that it is talking to your primary care professionals. That's right. 
and I think you also highlighted some of the risk factors. And then I mentioned about the birth process, actually. Sometimes people don't realize the impact of the birth process and the journey. Mm. And um, everybody's journey is different and everybody's yeah. journey and outcome of that journey presents differently in each person. So none is too big and none is too small. Yes. Because whichever way may be due to you, I remember you saying with respect to your childhood, with respect to uh, experiences that the person may have had, it can trigger things during mm -hmm. the postnatal period. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as mothers, we are vulnerable around that period. Mm -hmm. So anything that crops up and maybe yeah. keeps cropping up and you don't seem to be able to find a place for it or find a reasoning mm -hmm. for it that you're beginning to find a little bit overwhelming, then it's important to, you know, seek for that help or look for somebody, like you said, family member, public health nurse, mm -hmm. GP, to actually just talk to them about it and okay. maybe they can then help you signpost you appropriately or yeah. discuss that issue, explore it a little bit further yeah. for you. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Because of course, in the first few months, we are so preoccupied by baby. It's mm. often referred to as the fourth trimester. That's right. We're all consumed by baby. And then we start to kind of wonder about our own lives again. Mm -hmm. But my point really is that it may not be, as you rightly say, it may not be for many months after that we reflect on just what we've been through. Mm. And so it's never too late to seek help. That's right. Um, and, and it's also that parenthood is, is forever. <laughs> and so it is a marathon, not a sprint. So it's really to yeah, to always, at different stages, mm. there will be different challenges and different issues. Um, and it's to really refill our emotional cups That's regularly. Right. Yeah, you're right, uh, Gina. And uh, I also I appreciate the fact that you mentioned about the fourth trimester, yeah. you know, and usually that's, you know, after the baby. You're looked after closely or you're looked after, yeah, at the beginning. So while you, you're pregnant, you go to your GP, you have your visits, you have all the, after the, the delivery, people are there on the ward, you're admitted, you're taken care of. But when you get home, yeah. yes, the public health nurse comes in to visit, but it's different. Yeah. So that fourth trimester is so crucial in so many ways that like we've talked about sleep, we've talked about your emotion, with respect to your physical uh, ability, uh, your physical, gaining back your physical strength again. Mm. And from a physio point of view, you actually don't lose as much strength. What you lose is tone mm -hmm. because the pregnancy and the laxity of the hormones causes stretches in various areas. So sometimes some women actually are so quick to go back into fitness and their mm -hmm. tone is still very poor, their muscle tone. The muscle tone is really what kind of keeps your body, you know, nice and firm. Mm -hmm. So, but sometimes because of the hormones released during pregnancy, you're quite lax, you know. So if you're going to force a muscle to strengthen that is still lax as a result of the hormones, you mm. can actually cause more damage than, than mm. good. So it's very important that you have guided uh, return back to fitness. Mm. You will definitely get back to fitness, mm. but it has to be at a well-planned and directed uh, uh, process. Yeah. yeah, and to not put yourself under pressure. That's right. And, and that four trimester, which is that kind of, you know, the first three months, mm. you know, in the long they were often referred to as lying in hospitals and, and that women were often allowed, in inverted commas, to just mm. lie um, and, and, and be with baby. And, and uh, that was the, the focus. And I think that was uh, in support of that need for the body to recover. Mm. But I think, Ogechi, I think what the audience really appreciated today was your very frank discussion of, yeah, the pelvic floor and how important it is and the various um, uh, issues that can arise. And, not, and again, not to feel in any way stigmatized um, and to come forth and, and, and get help. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, your pelvic floor muscle is similar to any other muscle in the body. And that's why I keep explaining to women that if you fracture your ankle or break your wrist, you go to the GP to go and get mm -hmm. uh, assessed. Mm -hmm. So with respect to your pelvic floor or your bladder behavior mm -hmm. or the behavior of your back passage, and also even with respect to uh, uh, sexual 
uh, intercourse mm. as well yeah. after the delivery of the baby for those that may have had stitches. Mm. Do you know it's very important that if you're feeling anything that isn't as your normal, mm. you need to go and feel empowered to go and ask questions, mm. to go and seek help, get through your GP, through your public health nurse, and hopefully they will refer you to a physiotherapist, and then you'll be able to get your rehabilitation back. Mm. So the pregnancy process definitely, you know, is a journey yeah. for the muscle, for the woman in so many ways. It's a cycle. It's it 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 over. It can it can be overwhelming. Yes. But at the same time, though, there is a rehabilitation process that can get you back. Absolutely. So it's just for us as women to really be empowered yeah. to be able to go out and seek help and not feel, um, you know, that you know there's something wrong with me mm. or feel deje dejected, mm. to feel empowered to go and find out what is wrong with me. Because once you find out what is wrong with you, yes. you can look after your child. You can be that mother. You can be that wife. You can be that professional. Mm. You can be that friend. You can be that support. You can be that daughter as well. Mm to your mm. to your to to mm. all the respective people yeah absolutely because yeah. it's interesting at the end when we ask people for their reflections and we ask them to uh, mm. say it in one word the first comment was hope hope and i and it's really interesting and i think now more than ever we as humans need to be hopeful That's right. um but it is and it can be a daunting time mm. particularly in those early months mm. um, it can feel lonesome as we said um, and particularly for our new communities mm. um, who are negotiating so much and there's so many life stressors and challenges mm. um, that at the very time that you need a lot of security and a lot of support it, that's it's it, it, it's I think today's event enabling people from the Chum area to connect with each other mm. um, and uh, and and hopefully from today they've made those connections and relationships. I think that yeah is 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 a very hopeful uh, prospect. Yeah, no, I'm very glad that we've started this, and I just hope it's a seed mm. that grows into mm. something great and something power powerful mm. and something that would empower mm. a lot of us as women, a lot of of parents. Mm. and the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vagechi. Thank you, Jinan. And thank you for watching.